Coming up, more than 10 Iowans have died from this year's flu, and in states across the U.S., it is now being called an epidemic. And later, it is Martin Luther King Jr. Week celebration at the UI. We bring you the latest event on campus. Don't, don't be too afraid to embrace struggle. Don't be too afraid to put yourself in some uncomfortable situations so that you can discover humanity. Our very own Mary Kate Herring will give us her mid-season thoughts on the Iowa men's basketball team season so far. And we'll recap the Iowa women's basketball team's loss against the Huskers last night. We have warmer weather around the corner. Your weather coming up. All that and more coming up on this Wednesday morning edition of DITV. Wait right there because DITV starts right now. Good morning and thanks for joining us here this morning. I'm Lauren Varell. And I'm Ethan Gutstein. Our top story this morning is about the flu outbreak that seems to be sweeping across the country. That's right, Ethan, and it seems to be really taking a toll on Iowa. Our reporter Sydney Zatz is here in the studio with more on the outbreak. Sydney? Thanks, guys. That's right. The flu outbreak has been making headlines for weeks now with record numbers. And Iowa officials have reported a total of 14 influenza-related deaths since October 1st. Across the country, the flu is now considered to be widespread in every state except Hawaii. This is the first time the CDC has seen results like that in 13 years. While cases seem to be peaking, the flu outbreak is expected to continue throughout Iowa and the rest of the country. Officials say that all people at least six months old are at risk and should be getting a flu vaccine. Symptoms to watch out for include fever, headache, tiredness, cough, sore throat, congestion, and body aches. So remember to keep washing your hands and visit a doctor if you are experiencing these symptoms. If you have not received your flu shot, you can get one at Student Health or CVS at the Old Capitol Mall, amongst many other health clinics on campus. Guys, back to you at the desk. More than 100 animals have been discovered in a home in Vinton City. Vinton City inspectors and police inspected the home early Tuesday morning. Inside, they rescued four children who had been living in the house. They saw there, there were more than a thousand animals and even some decomposing skeletons. The parents of the four children cooperated with authorities. All of the animals have been rescued and the investigation is still ongoing. The death penalty may be coming back to Iowa. One senator is looking to introduce a bill this session that would allow for death penalties in some cases. Those convicted of kidnapping, rape, and murder of a minor would be eligible. The bill was first introduced last year, but is expected to be reintroduced in the upcoming session. Historically, the last time the death penalty was used in Iowa was in 1963. A longtime Iowa City store is, is closing its doors. University Camera first opened its doors downtown in 1970. Now after, nearly 30, ne now after nearly 50 years, the owners have announced that they are shutting down. They say poor sales are the cause. Doors will officially close on April 15th. Actor Woody Harrelson is coming to the UI. The event will have a screening of his new movie, Lost in London, with the discussion after the movie. Harrelson is an academic Academy Award winner and Golden Globe Award nominee. He is best known for his roles in The Hunger Games, Now You See Me, and Zombieland. The screening will be at 7 p.m. on January 25th. It is happening at the Iowa Memorial Union in the main lounge. Admission is free with, for anyone that wants to go. Well, Lauren, I'm actually really excited about that event, uh, and thank God it's inside. I know. It's been so cold this week. I hope it personally <laughs> warms up this week. Let's go ahead and toss it over to Jacob in the, in the weather studio with more. Jacob? Thanks, guys. Good morning, everyone. It's the second day of classes here in Iowa City, and lucky for us, it's going to warm up this next couple of days. Today, we are looking at high of 25 degrees with sunny skies. There is a 10% chance of precipitation, so we'll just see what happens with that. Tonight's will bring us to a low of 16 degrees, though, with clear skies throughout the night. 
Now looking at your five day forecast, looking pretty good for those sun lovers. 35 for a high on Thursday with sunny skies. Both Friday and Saturday will bring you in the low 40s. Sunday will even see temps at 44 degrees. We do, however, have 40, 80 uh, percent chance of precipitation, so be sure to grab that umbrella on your way out. Next Monday is looking to have some potentially nasty weather coming up as temps drop back down into the mid 30s. This could bring a wintry mix to the table, but we'll just have to see as the week moves along. Uh, it looks to be moving. It looks to be above freezing for the rest of the week. So on the lookout. So be on the lookout for melting snow and a 100% chance of happier faces. That's all I have for you. You here in the weather studio. You guys take it. Yesterday may have been the start of the new semester, but that hasn't stopped the university from jumping straight into the week of full events to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. DITV reporter Christopher Cervantes reports on the latest event. While Monday was the official celebration in remembrance of Martin Luther King Jr., the University of Iowa continues to honor his work and memory throughout the week. Yesterday was the Hip Hop for Humanity event presented by Che Rhymefest Smith. Deep in the IMU, this Grammy Award winning artist and known activist spoke on how his own personal success shaped his philosophy towards his activist duties. Let's take care of our words. Let's focus them on the things that we really want to see become realities. The evening was spent with a captivated audience that was hanging on his every word, with approval reaching an all-time high once he came to his thesis. Guess what? Ignorance, which is really the sickness that leads to evil, is collaborative. It, it knows it can't work on its own. While this event proved to be a, both a popular and passionate affair, the university has much more in store for the student body. This entire week is part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Week. That's right, there are three more days left to honor the memory of a great man with an even greater legacy. Reporting from the Iowa Memorial Union, this is Christopher Cervantes, DITV News. It all continues today with a dialogue titled, Why is it always about race when neutrality is not the answer? A discussion designed again to engage the topics of white supremacy, neutrality, and how that affects the hawk the Hawkeyes community. This event will take place at the IMU in the Lucas Dodge Room. The Hawkeye Meal Share program is starting to make a difference for students across campus. More than 800 students participated in the program last semester by donating their meals. The program was started in hopes of combating food insecurity and hunger. It allows students to donate their meal swipes to other students on campus. More than 400 meals were donated just our last semester, and students will now get to start using them. UISG is hopeful that the program will help food insecure students and cut down on waste. Yeah, I'm, that work sounds like super great work done by students. Um, speaking of students, Hawkeye Sports has a pack jam weekend. Let's go ahead and, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, re yeah, I'm really excited. I hear there's a lot of gymnastics and there'll be a lot of basketball, but let's toss it over to Natalie in the sports studio to get more about what's going on in sports this weekend. Natalie? Thanks, guys. Coming off a slow weekend for Hawkeye Sports, they will sure be busy this weekend. Both women's and men's tennis compete. Women's gymnastics has their first home meet. Men's basketball will compete tonight before coming back to Iowa to take on number three Purdue on Saturday. And we will get to see track and field at home this weekend as well. And there are some very high expectations for the Iowa track and field team as well. They kicked off their 2018 season with Media Day on January 10th. They will open up their season this Saturday and are already setting their goals high. We have a, a real high expectations. I mean, th we probably have more depth and, in, in, um, you know, those elite level athletes that you need to compete at the national championships. We've got more depth in both areas uh, for both the men and the women than we've ever had. So I feel very confident that both our men's and women's teams can compete in the, in, in the uh, you know, top two or three at the Big Ten championships this year. Um, this year, I'm trying to run like 20.4, 44.6 make the national final and potentially even win nationals in the four and the four by four. I'm hoping to get better technically this year in the front of the ring in shot put and discus and that's what I've been working on these past couple weeks so that's what I'm expecting to do and hopefully put a good throw together every week and every meet and 
PR every week. Harris, who was a first team yeah, All-American no, no, no. last year, is looking to have the same success with his 4x400 that placed third at Nationals last year. And to fully also shown in the clip, he's looking to improve off his strong sophomore campaign that also earned him an All-American bid in discus. The Iowa women's basketball team traveled to Nebraska last night to take on the Cornhuskers in a game that ended in disappointment. The number 17 ranked Hawks fell in a close one to the Huskers by a final score of 65 to 74. Iowa's Megan Gustafson scored 29 points and grabbed 18 boards before fouling out in the fourth quarter. This loss puts the Hawks 3-3 in Big Ten and will likely bump them out of the top 25. Switching over to men's basketball team, they head out east tonight to face a Big Ten opponent in Rut Rutgers. Mary-Kate Herring is standing by in the studio to give us a breakdown on the game. Mary-Kate? Thanks, guys. Now, Iowa season, I think most can agree, has been extremely inconsistent so far. Right now, as they're almost halfway through their season, a lot of people are ready to hit the panic button, but as I have preached all the way from the beginning, patience is going to be key with this young team. Yes, young, you've heard me say it from the beginning of the season. They start four underclassmen and one junior, but I will say they do have some problems they need to fix. Their offensive inconsistency is probably their biggest issue on the court, but this is where them being a young team comes in. Most of these guys are still learning how to play with each other, including the two freshmen, which one of the two always will be in that starting five. The Hawks haven't played since their overtime win against Illinois last week, where Iowa shot 50% from the field and had two players scoring more than 20 points in Jordan Bohannon and Tyler Cook. Now they look toward the Scarlet Knights who after a hot start to their season have been on a bit of a cold streak going 5-8 and eight in their last 13 games and blew a 30 point lead to Ohio State last Sunday. The last time Iowa visited Rutgers it was not pretty for the Scarlet Knights as the Hawks dominated from start to finish 83-63. But in order for them to get their second Big Ten win of the season, they need to come ready and confident. That being said, here are my keys to the game. Number one, you have to move Bohannon to the two guard more often than they have been. Sticking him at the one is killing his game. His role changed a lot this season with Jock leaving, but Bohannon is a born, a born scorer and you want the ball in his hands. They're going to need him to have games like he did against U of I if they're going to win the majority of these conference games, especially with the ranked opponents they have coming up. He needs to be a player that you can count on to score double digits every single game and keeping him at the point the entire game is going to hurt his chances to do that. On a positive note, though, he has scored in double digits the last four games, so hopefully we can continue to see that Bohannon on the court. Number two, offensive consistency. This goes side by side with getting Bohannon some time at the two because it will just completely open up the floor for the rest of the offense. But them not being able to be efficient on offense is actually affecting their defense and them being able to stop teams in transition. Number three, good rotation pattern. Cook and Bohannon are the two you can usually count on to keep Iowa in those tight games, but the rest of the guys are questionable. One night a player will have a really strong game and then the next he just can't seem to find his rhythm. So finding the right five for each game is going to be crucial, not just for tonight, but for the rest of the season. Those are my three main keys to the game tonight. I will, will take on Rutgers on BTN at 6 p.m. Come back tomorrow for highlights from their game. Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Thanks Mary Kay. And we'll see if the Hawkeyes take her advice tonight. But she is always right, so if they do, they will most likely get the win. But you can catch more of Mary Kate and her co-host, Zach Mackey, every Friday morning for the rest of the basketball season for their courtside show. That's it for me in the sports studio. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for a preview of Iowa Wrestling's road trip to Columbus, where they will be taking on number one ranked Ohio State. Buckeyes. And we'll have a recap from the Iowa men's basketball game going on tonight at Rutgers. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Natalie. Well, that will do it for this Wednesday edition of DITV. Be sure to, be sure to head over to thedailyiowan.com for all your latest news. If that isn't enough for, of the DI for you, pre, be sure to pick up this print edition outside DITV newspaper in the, in the Adler Journalism Building now. For the Daily Iowan TV, I'm Lauren Varell. And I'm Ethan Gutstein. Have a great Wednesday, Iowa City.